This is Matthew Cratter from Bitcoin University, and today I wanted to talk about whether it's a good idea to use your phone to store large amounts of Bitcoin. This was suggested by CypherMonk7258 in the comments to this video about how multisig makes all Bitcoin safe, Bitcoin are safer. And he said what you could do is you could memorize both seed phrases. So in multisig you have three keys and you need two of them, for example, to move your Bitcoin. He says you can memorize both seed phrases and when you need them, just download two separate Bitcoin wallets. This is presumably on your phone. These are software wallets and restore both wallets separately so you can use them to sign the transaction or have them written down on a piece of paper, which is, I think, a very bad idea. Paper is very easy to be destroyed by, by water or by uh, someone misplacing it or by fire. No hardware wallets needed, he says. Definitely cheaper with a cheap burner phone with Wi-Fi, of course. And I think this is a bad idea for a number of reasons. The uh, What CypherMonk doesn't tell us is how he's actually generating these seed phrases. You really should be using a hardware wallet to generate them unless you're using dice or something like this. But there are other problems. Before we go into that though, for people who are new to this, I just wanted to explain the difference between hot wallets and cold wallets. A hot wallet is just the term for any Bitcoin wallet that's connected to the internet by Wi-Fi or by cellular connection. A cold wallet, also known as cold storage, is one in which you're storing Bitcoin that's not connected to, it, to the internet. The cold wallet never touches the internet. Examples of hot wallets include mobile wallets, desktop wallets, web-based wallets. The best example of cold wallets really is hardware wallets. And my two favorite hardware wallets are the Blockstream Jade. This is the less expensive option and the cold card, which is sort of the fancier uh, and uh, the option with more features. But I think these are both very good products. The best thing about hardware wallets is that your private keys can be generated on them offline. And subsequently, even when you sign, your private keys never touch the internet. Unless, of course, you're using something like a Ledger hardware wallet that has closed source firmware. You never really know what's running in there. And the Ledger, unfortunately, now appears to be able to transmit your private keys over the internet. This is uh, the video, which I'll link to in the description notes below, that talks about why you shouldn't use Ledger hardware wallets. But let's talk a little bit more about how you might use the Blockstream or the cold card and why these make a lot of sense, especially when you're using them to send or spend your Bitcoin when you need to sign a transaction. And there's no way to send or spend Bitcoin without signing using the private keys that are associated with that Bitcoin address in which you're holding the Bitcoin. Now, when you use a hardware wallet to sign a Bitcoin transaction, that transaction is transmitted to your hardware wallet, either through the USB port or in an air gap fashion, sometimes using a camera or a screen. And then that transaction gets signed inside of the hardware wallet. The transaction is then sent back out of the wallet and then you use uh, your software. Often you'll use Blockstream Green or something like this or Sparrow or another software to broadcast the transaction to the Bitcoin network. And then your, your signed transaction is shared by nodes around the world, which verify whether you have signed using the correct private keys. Now, during this whole process, even when you're generating private keys on a hardware wallet, when you first initialize one, during this process, your private keys never touch the internet and are never exposed online. They remain inside the hardware wallet. By contrast, if you have a software wallet on your phone, then your private keys are being stored on a device that is connected to the internet. In other words, a hot wallet. And it's connected, as we said, either via Wi-Fi or transmitting towers and satellites that are part of the cellular network. Now, if you ever need to sign a transaction using that hot wallet on your phone, there is a brief moment where your private keys are exposed and could be stolen. So even if you delete your mobile wallet when you're done using it, and when you're done generating your recovery seed, which is not a good idea to do that on a phone, which is connected to the internet, as we said, even if you delete your mobile wallet when you're done using it, you're still going to need to re-enter your recovery seed and reconstitute your wallet in order to sign another transaction in the future. Recovery seed is just that 12 or 24 word backup. Now, smartphones have lots of different pro programs operating on them, including the operating system, of course, as well as many apps and probably some malware as well. So even if you keep your smartphone permanently offline, it takes just one little mistake to accidentally connect it to the internet. You might do it, your toddler might do it, a thief might do it. And just to emphasize, every time you use a hot wallet to sign a transaction, those private keys are briefly exposed and could be stolen. So this is why it's not a good idea to use a hot wallet or a software wallet like this for any large amounts of Bitcoin. Conclusion, hot wallets on your phone 
or desktop are fine, but you should treat them like your physical wallet or purse. Don't keep more money in them than you would be comfortable walking around with maybe $100 or $200 for the average American. And a phone is never a good place to store your long-term Bitcoin savings. You should keep your long-term Bitcoin savings on a hardware wallet, either using single sig where you need a single signature to sign to move it, or across a few hardware wallets, which is what multisig is. For more on multisig, I will link again to this video below how multisig makes all Bitcoin are safer, in which I explain a little bit more about that. If you want to set up your own multisig, or if you want to do a collaborative custody version of it, Unchained.com is a great place to do this. Uh, they're a very legit company. In this case, they will hold one key and you will hold two keys, so they will not actually have custody of your Bitcoin and they can't move it unless you sign with one of your two keys, but they can help you set up a multi-sig vault there. And I believe you can set up a multi-sig vault for free. And then later in time, you can borrow against the Bitcoin. They also offer uh, lending services as well. If you want to learn how to send up, set up your own Bitcoin vault using uh, a do-it-yourself multi-vendor, multi-sig solution, this is something that I teach in my paid course, which I'll link to in the description notes below. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.